a 360 degree dash camera. Yeah, I was surprised as you are. And how did it all go with this rear view mirror based Cardi VR? Let's inspect! Well, nice to meet you here, everyone. My name is Michael, and this is a dash camera. Akio have asked me to check out this new device. I generally avoid rear view mirror based cameras, but once I saw it's actually a 360 degree dash camera, no way to miss such an opportunity. On top, it's meant to offer the most discreet kind of installation since it's placed on top of your rear view mirror. Although, gonna show you throughout the episodes, there have been some challenges. Obviously, the most fun part out of everything is the ability to browse around and focus and look exactly at the spots that you're interested in seeing. But let us do this review properly and get to know everything important about the dashcam. Hakio is a brand that mainly operates in Japan, but I've also found their products on Amazon. The company is known for designing pretty interesting and niche-oriented cameras, having to offer almost everything, even dash cameras for motorbikers. This one in particular costs around $280, which for a 360-degree capable device is not bad at all. Of course, this is more expensive than most regular dash cams, but given the fact there's a lot more software and R&D involved in spheric cameras, I think the price is kind of okay, especially for 2022. Unboxing. Hey, that's been pretty cool. Luckily, besides Japanese, there are a lot of English notes on the box as well. I saw a few places where the camera is advertised as a 720 degree. I won't focus right now on this statement, but let's say the camera definitely covers a lot. If you hover your smartphone with Google Lens on, you're gonna be able to understand the text from this note. It's the main unit. Besides being a mirror, it hosts a super large screen and the dashcam components. There's a rear module, a power cable and also included hardwire kit. So far, I'm pleased with the amount of accessories included. Furthermore, there was a micro SD card, so the only things I had to do was to install the dash camera and get to use it. Now, prior to that, as usual, the specs walk through. The front camera is powered by Sony IMX335 image sensors, resolution 1920x1920p, rear module is IMX307 running in full HD. Display size is of 12 inches. This parking mode option, a GPS module, supercapacitor inbuilt. There also is PC software for viewing the files. If this information sounds like too geeky, the easier version, image sensors are quite good, among the best that a dash camera can be equipped with these days. The only concern that I have is about the pixel density, because the sphere like POV has really a lot to cover. Installation comes next. It's overall easy and flexible, with possibility to actually fine-tune anything the way you like it. We're gonna start with the front unit, because it is anyways the most interesting component. Essentially, this is among the dash cameras with the easiest kind of installation ever, because there is not too much that you need to plan. It's being placed on top of your original rearview mirror, and is being mounted via these flexible elastic pads. The good news is that they will fit almost any size of a rear-view mirror, so the chances that it's gonna fit your car are pretty big. The only thing that is important to consider is the weight. If your mirror is mounted via adhesive tape to the glass, make sure to avoid leaving it for too long under direct sunlight in the summer, because it can weaken the tape. You can pull the lens module a little bit down, there is no need for adjustment because the AI algorithm is going to sense the direction of movement and automatically adapt. The cables, however, are too thick for my taste, a little bit difficult to hide, but since there are a lot of things flowing, it is understandable about the size. Try to hide them as good as possible. You also have to plan the placement of the GPS, it is a separate module and you have flexibility about choosing the installation spot or optionally you might decide to not use it. Also, the rear camera module requires some attention for the installation. You can mount it inside the car or outside, depending on the type of vehicle that you have. I've always preferred to keep these rear modules internally, so that the lens is not prone to scuffs caused by dirt, sand or little rocks. Footage coming out of it is actually quite nice and has field of view close to 140 degrees, which is wide enough. Since it's always on, it could be a pretty handy tool for parking assistance. 
You can furthermore connect the dedicated signal wire so that the camera is going to automatically trigger parking mode as soon as you switch to rear gear, but I haven't gone for this setting in my case because I'm happy enough with the defaults. Configuration wise, here's the display. It has a few different modes and you can switch to any of the three available cameras at any point of time. In daylight, the glass is reflective enough so you can count on it as if you're using a regular rear view mirror. The input from the cameras themselves is gonna look of course a bit pale. At night, you can see the rear camera is showing what happens behind you, but in the same time you can still use it as a mirror. It's stable, well built, seems to cover all the features that you may need. At the time I've been testing it, there were only the Japanese audible tones and honestly I didn't get to understand what it is saying. All the configuration menus are present in English, so you can choose among the various settings. Now, some more footage. I need to underline that the camera doesn't output separate video files for each of the lenses, so you have to manually parse them via the software. It unfortunately is not going to let you export them in specific resolution, but according to Akio's support, this might appear as a feature at some point. This is why some of the footage you're looking at may look slightly distorted. These are the chunks that I've parsed myself through the software and have added some distortion correction and stretching them so that they fit within the 1080p resolution. Nice option is that you can tune the angle of the recordings in any possible direction so that out of the minute worth of recording you can film literally everything that happens around you and you can get like four different chunks. I believe this feature alone may be priceless for taxi drivers, even for regular drivers. If a police officer pulls you over, you're going to have the footage and voice recording of the whole event. As you can see already, bunch of remarks related to the image quality. Daytime footage is grainy, lacks details and quite far away from the quality of most good dash cameras. Since this is a 360 degree camera, I'm toning down my expectations a bit because it's quite a challenge to get distortion free and chromatic aberration free image, but still there's a lot to catch up with in terms of quality and I guess the basic all winner chipset inside is to be blamed about that. Also, the stitching between the lenses is not that good and you can easily notice it. As for the nighttime footage, this is what I was quite eager to try out. It's fine, perhaps a bit better than what I expected given the daytime footage quality. A side-by-side -side comparison to my regular 4K dashcam shows that the captured footage is sometimes kind of alright for recognizing car plates and other small details. The rear module seems to show another type of weakness. You can well notice the light beams and reflections going up and down, perhaps due to the basic optics used. Drawbacks my remarks about the 720 degree calculation, the lack of Wi-Fi and therefore smartphone app and the not too advanced PC software. The last one will hopefully get improvements in time and the rest I think is reasonable trade-off for getting such a nice and functional spherical camera that can capture a lot of awesome family moments and won't break your wallet given the rather attractive price. But if you're looking for a good and reliable dash camera, maybe you should explore some other models as well. So what do you think? Have you ever considered a 360 degree dash camera? Or you prefer to use this kind of tech in the shape of an action cam? Do you like the footage of this one? Do let me know how you feel about it. In case of questions, I'd of course do my best to help and support you in the comments below this video. Looks like this review is approaching its end, so let me wish you safe it, drive safely and stick around for more cool tech inspections. I'm Michael and wish you a fantastic day. See ya!